All right, first thing, I got to ask everyone this question. Just tell us your name and a little bit about yourself. My name is Joe Garvey. I'm a karate school owner and teacher. I also am a um, nanny and a personal assistant, or not personal assistant, but a uh, ah, yeah, personal trainer. There you go. Okay. Okay, so just the uh, first question, what is your opinion on social media sites? Um, I use them a large amount, everything from talking to friends, family that I haven't seen in a while, to marketing for my business. Okay. Uh, so you teach kids, correct? Like, what's the age I range teach, on... Oh, sorry. I teach ages three and a half till adult. Okay. I'm all in specific groups based off of their age groups. Okay, and is there like, like, obviously, what are like the significant differences between the ages, like, you know, in like the attitudes towards like someone who's in Kinder Food and someone who's like in your action kits? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I want to say my Kinder Food classes are from three and a half to seven. The action kits are from seven until about 12 or 13. Um, as far as attitudes of kids, they get more advanced as they get older and more complex. Usually when they're in the kinder food, they're a lot more just want to do something fun and do something exciting. And then they, they get into possibly a little bit of a specialty, but the uh, action kids, they get more into the more into the social side of it too where they'll be hanging out with people after class or they'll start knowing people after school and get bigger with their relationship. Right. Okay, now how many of your students do you say you like interact with via social media? I think right now as far as adult students I interact with probably about 10 to 20 of them. Uh, as far as teen and preteen, it's probably more like three or four. Okay. Do you notice like a difference between like a teen or preteen like in class and then like on like the social media, like what they post on Facebook? Or, like you would never expect them to say that in person. Or are they pretty and clean? Then... Like let's say like I go on Facebook and I say like f this and f that, but like in the dojo I would never go and be like oh f this f that you know. Like, are they two uh, different yeah, people? Yeah, that's going to be a different time that, um, so I have a green team girl that I caught swearing on Facebook and talking about things that are, like, I say caught because she, I wouldn't allow her to swear or I would reprimand her for swearing in karate class, but it's kind of a more free flow, um, you can do whatever you want on Facebook and myself and my wife both saw her post and talked to her individually about how this is kind of an image that she's let now. Right. Uh, do you feel like that's like, that like that stuff she said on Facebook, do you think that was kind of like, you know, her parents talked that way, or do you think she saw something on TV and got the words there? Um, usually I think it probably comes mostly from their classmates, and what their classmates say in general. I think the... TV media has a lot less to do with what the, the my students are saying as they're the friends that they're hanging out with. Okay. Where do you think their friends, like, get this stuff from, you know? Like, is that, like, some of their parents say, or they heard it, like, in a rap song or something? It's probably mostly from their uh, family um, and friends. And that doesn't mean that the... TV definitely has, like, some negative things that can be said, but it's, um, it's still the influence of their, like, I want to say that person specifically was hanging out with a person that was a lot more, like, vulgar of a friend. Yeah. That they weren't, like, a bad person, but as she was hanging out with her, she was starting to be more in that direction a little more disrespectful to adults and parents and it actually went where she started 
started joining some clubs with the high school and with the junior high school, and she was hanging out with people that weren't connected that way, and that pretty much turned her around a little bit. So you say, like, French, like, their peers are kind of a big impact on, like, their behaviors and stuff, for the most part? I think they have an amazing impact on it. Okay. Uh, do you remember, like, what you kind of were like as a child and what made you that way, kind of, if you're okay with talking about that? Can you say that again? Um, do you remember, like, what you were kind of like as a kid or growing up, like, if you're okay with talking about stuff like that, you know, I know you had a little bit of a troubled yeah, past. Which, which thing specifically? Just, like, what was, like, your behaviors and stuff growing up and, like, what made you kind of act the way you acted? Okay, um... Got any stories or anything? A lot of how I acted was due to, um, I guess a couple different stressors, but a parent divorce at a young age, having a step family that I was incorporated into, and, um, probably the fact that I didn't have as many like close friends as I was growing up because I moved around a lot. So <laughs> my behavior in general was um, very introverted, uh, not very expressive, um, shy, and not very outspoken. Um, most of it is just because I feel that as like the youngest person, I was probably looked after the least kind of given a lot of freedom or whatever to do whatever I wanted, but it wasn't, I didn't have anybody around that was telling me to do, like, bad things to become cool or something like that. It was more just myself being solo. Okay. Did you have any, like, role models or anything growing up, or were you kind of just, you know, for yourself? I had a couple role models, and they've switched over time, but um, my karate teacher... He was one of the bigger role models as far as how to be act and also just somebody that would listen and talk to you as a future adult, even as like a teenager and a preteen. Um, my my father has always been a role model for me and still is just because of the way he lives his life in a good way. Um, and my older brother was a role model and that is is a natural pretty much anything he did from video games to <laughs> athletics. Alright, who do you feel um, oh keep going. Yeah more. Go ahead. Uh do you have anything else to say on that or are you done? Oh, that's it. Okay, um who do you feel like make the best role models for children, teens, etc.? I feel um if it's possible the family is usually the best. Um sometimes you don't have a family member to role model after um, so it might be a good friend or a um, like I feel, I feel like somebody around your age as far as somebody doing the right things or doing sports that you're hanging out with that seems to be the person that you can reflect with most and have a good conversation and also like develop together um, myself I had a best friend that was friend basically a sophomore year of high school where he had a very poor family that both poor in money and in attitude and he basically became part of our family and had my family as role models so he got the chance to see another side of life and actually like absorbed not only myself as a friend but also like all my brothers and my dad and stepmom and Super successful, and he's the only person in his family that graduated college and also like planned out a marriage and not had random bad things. Has never been in jail. That's which I think both his brother and sister have both been there. Okay. So that would then go back to his friend. Is probably the like a friend that you can actually look up to is the friend that will change your life for the better. Okay. Um, but I'll say also, like, in a, an adult role model that is not a family, it would probably be the second best. Yeah. Or a second. You don't want to just have one. There's a, an adult role model that you actually believe is the right heart and mindset will lead you through some of the 
questions that your friend hasn't been through and 